Last October, when my co-workers and I were investigating the work of several churches, we found that gospel and watering of the Chungnan church were paralyzed. Other church work suffered too. I was quite surprised. I thought, Sister Lee was transferred here to be the church leader two months ago. Why hasn't the work improved since then? So my partner, Sister Zhu, went there to learn about the work and resolve problems. A few days later, Sister Zhu wrote, For the past two months, Sister Lee has been pursuing fame and status. She seeks quick success in her duty. When she sees work as ineffective, instead of fellowshipping on the truth to resolve problems and help others, she deals with and scolds them, saying they have low caliber and are irresponsible in their duties. She doesn't oversee or supervise any of the church work in practice, meaning many areas of church work have come to a standstill. <sighs> After reading the letter, I was shocked, and I thought, when Sister Lee was in charge of leading the other churches, she pursued image and status. She spent her time wondering how others saw her and was negative if they didn't admire her. She became distracted from her duty, meaning many problems in the churches remained unsolved. We had fellowshipped and tried to help her with this problem many times, and also exposed her for walking the Antichrist's path of pursuing fame and status. She admitted it at the time and had willingness to repent. And later, she could do her work with some plans and goals. After she was transferred to the Chengnan Church, why did the problem recur? At this point, I remembered, Sister Lee was dismissed from a leadership position twice before, both times for pursuing fame and status and not doing practical work. Although she had some knowledge of herself and wanted to repent, she stubbornly pursued these things again and again, she hadn't repented or changed. And the principles of identifying false leaders and workers came to mind. All who work only for name and status, who do not pursue the truth and have no reality of the truth, are false leaders and workers. Given Sister Lee's consistent behavior, she was likely a false leader who only pursued fame and status and didn't actually do practical work. Hmm. Then I thought, I had recommended Sister Lee as a church leader, and at that time, she expressed some understanding of her pursuit of fame and status and not doing practical work. So I thought she had genuine repentance and accepted the truth. In addition, she was a skilled speaker and showed some competence at work. So I recommended her. Now, if she really was dismissed for being a false leader, everyone would say that I chose people without principles. And despite being a leader for many years, I couldn't actually discern the difference between genuine self-knowledge and hypocritical knowledge. My co-workers would also think I had no realities of truth and couldn't discern people. Since I had recommended someone who didn't pursue the truth as a leader, wouldn't I lose my status and good image in the hearts of my brothers and sisters? Hmm. When I thought of this, I didn't want to face the facts. I hope Sister Zhu could help Sister Lee more and turn her state around so she could be a good leader. That way she wouldn't be dismissed my status and image would also be preserved. So I discussed this matter with my co-workers to suggest Sister Zhu to help Sister Lee more. If Sister Lee could change her state, she could still do some real work in the church. And my co-workers agreed to this. After that, I anxiously awaited Sister Zhu's reply every day, wondering if Sister Lee's state had really changed for the better. I was very nervous and worried. I feared that if she was dismissed for not changing her state, it would damage my image. A few days later, Sister Zhu wrote back, Sister Li has been at the Chengnan Church for two months. She only urges the progress of tasks and doesn't solve problems through fellowship. She does no practical work at all. As a result, the problems of the brothers and sisters remain unsolved. She said she fellowshiped and helped Sister Li with her problem many times, but Sister Li was still concerned with image and status and how others perceived her. She had no attitude of repentance at all. After reading the letter, I felt a bit of panic. Given Sister Lee's current behavior, she was a false leader who did no practical work and only pursued fame and status. She had to be replaced. But when I was about to talk to my co-workers, I swallowed my words I couldn't speak. I thought I was the one who chose Sister Lee. At the time, I told my co-workers, that although Sister Lee had been dismissed before, she had some knowledge of herself 
and she was someone who pursued the truth. Only then did my co-workers agree to choose her. If now I tell them she is a false leader instead, not someone who pursues the truth and should be dismissed, won't I just be making myself look bad? Besides, since I lack discernment and choose someone who doesn't pursue the truth as a leader, in the process causing serious harm to the work of the church, won't my co-workers think of me as a false leader who can't do actual work as well? If they were to dismiss me, that would be incredibly embarrassing. I've believed in God for years, and in the end I become a false leader and will be dismissed. That thought made me miserable, so I didn't want to suggest dismissing Sister Lee. But if I didn't speak, I would feel guilty. If a false leader reigns for one day, the work of God's house is harmed, and I wasn't defending the interests of God's house. Right. Right. I fought with myself over and over on whether I should speak or not. In torment, I prayed to God. God, I lack discernment recommending Sister Lee as a leader brought such great harm to the work of God's house. Now I know Sister Lee is a false leader, but I want to maintain my image and status so I don't want to say it. God, please guide me in practicing the truth and safeguarding the work of God's house. Mm. Amen. During my devotionals the next day, I read this passage of God's Word. Mm. As leaders and workers, when problems occur, you tend to ignore them and may even seek pretexts and excuses to shirk responsibility. You don't solve some problems you're capable of, and those you can't solve, you don't report to superiors, as if they have nothing to do with you. Is this not a dereliction? Is treating the work of the church this way the clever thing to do or the foolish thing to do? It's foolish. Are such leaders and workers not actually snakes? Are they not devoid of any sense of responsibility? When they ignore problems in front of them, does this not show just how heartless and treacherous they are? Treacherous people are the most foolish people of all. You must be honest and responsible when facing problems. And you must find ways to seek the truth to resolve problems. Do not be a treacherous person. If problems arise and you just think of shirking responsibility and washing your hands, even those who are unbelievers will condemn these actions. Do you imagine God's house will not? God's chosen people despise such behavior. God loves honest people, but hates deceitful and cunning people. If you behave treacherously and try to play tricks, won't God hate you? Will God's house just let you off the hook? Sooner or later, you'll be held accountable. God likes the honest and dislikes the treacherous. Everyone should be clear on this and stop being confused and doing foolish things. Momentary ignorance is understandable. But refusing to accept the truth at all is a stubbornness to change. The honest take responsibility and don't think of their gains and losses, but rather safeguard the work and interests of God's house. They have kind and honest hearts. They are like a bowl of clear water that one can see the bottom of at a glance. There is also transparency in the actions of this kind of person. A deceitful person always plays tricks, always disguises things, covers up and wraps themselves in packaging so tightly that no one can see through them or figure them out. People can't see your inner thoughts, but God sees the deepest things in your heart. If God sees you're not honest, but are cunning, that you never accept the truth, always want to deceive Him, and you don't give your heart to Him, God won't love you. He'll hate and abandon you. Amen. Amen. After reading God's words, I understood. God likes those who are simple and honest, and those who have the courage to admit mistakes and to correct them. If you make mistakes in your duty, try to protect yourself, don't dare to admit it, and find excuses to shirk and cover up, then you are a cunning person, someone God loathes and hates. Yes. I realized I was just such a cunning villain. I lacked discernment, so I chose someone who didn't pursue the truth as a leader, causing massive harm to the work of God's house. This was already a transgression, and I should have made amends. But in order to maintain my image in the hearts of my brothers and sisters, 
All the while knowing that each day a false leader reigns, the church's work is suffering. I didn't dismiss her to safeguard the interests of the family of God. I made mistake after mistake and deliberately wanted to cover them up for my sake. True. I felt extremely guilty. God has provided us with so much truth and His house cultivated me for years. But to protect myself and avoid responsibility, I watched a false leader disrupt the work of God's house. I was too selfish, despicable, and deceitful to be called a human being. Yeah. With this in mind, I hurried to meet with my co-workers. And I told them, Sister Lee only cares about the pursuit of fame and status and does no practical work. She is seriously affecting church work. She is a false leader and must be dismissed right away. After fellowship, the co-workers also confirmed that Sister Lee was a false leader. And soon she was replaced. Afterwards, I opened up to my co-workers about what I exposed and learned through this experience. To my surprise, they didn't blame me for picking the wrong person. And we summed up our deviations and mistakes in selecting people. Through this fellowship, I saw I had chosen the wrong person, primarily because I couldn't discern genuine self-understanding, as well as discern people who genuinely pursue and love the truth. Later, I read some of God's words that helped me understand more. Mm. Shall we watch a video reading of God's word? Yes. Let's. Almighty God says, How can one distinguish whether a person loves the truth? On one hand, one must look at whether this person can come to know themselves based on God's word. If they can know themselves through God's word, they are a person who loves the truth. On the other hand, one must look at whether they can accept and practice the truth. If they can practice the truth, they are someone who can obey God's work. If they only recognize the truth, but never accept or practice it, as some people say, I understand all of the truth but I can't practice it. This proves they are not someone who loves the truth. Some people admit that God's word is the truth and that they have corrupt dispositions and also say that they are willing to repent and remake themselves anew. But after that, there is no change at all. Their words and actions are still the same as before. When they talk about knowing themselves, it's as if they are telling a joke or shouting a slogan. They are not exposing their deceit from the depths of their heart with an attitude of hatred and disgust or with an attitude of repentance and knowledge. Instead, they are engaging in formalities and pretending to open up. This is not a person who genuinely accepts the truth. When such people talk about knowing themselves, they are going through the motions and pretending to be spiritual. They think everyone else opens up and analyzes their own deceit. If I don't say anything, I'll embarrass myself, so I'd better go through the motions. After which they describe their own deceit as gravely serious, illustrating it in dramatic fashion, and their self-knowledge seems especially profound. Everyone who hears feels they truly know themselves, and thereupon look upon them with envy which in turn makes them feel as if they are glorious, as if they've just adorned themselves with a halo. This manner of self-knowledge achieved by going through the motions, coupled with their disguise and deceit, utterly misleads others. Can their conscience be at ease when they do this? Isn't this just blatant deceit when they do this, they do not feel guilty. Their conscience is not uneasy after they disguise themselves and deceive. They feel nothing 
after rebelling against and deceiving God. And they do not pray to God to admit their mistake. Aren't people like this hard-hearted? If they don't feel guilty, can they ever feel remorse? Can someone who feels no remorse ever repent? Can a person with an unrepentant heart betray the interests of the flesh to practice the truth? No. Without even the desire to repent, isn't it absurd to talk about self-knowledge? Isn't this just disguise and deceit? How can you discern whether someone pursues the truth? How can you evaluate whether someone is a person who pursues the truth? Suppose there is a person who has believed in God for seven or eight years. They may be able to speak many words of doctrines. Their mouths may be full of spiritual vocabulary. They may often help others. They may seem to be very enthusiastic. They may be able to forsake things, and they may perform their duties with great vigor. Yet they are not able to practice much truth, not discuss real experiences of life entry, and much less have a change in life disposition. It can be said with certainty that someone like this does not pursue the truth. If someone genuinely loves the truth, after a period of time experiencing things, they will be able to talk about their understanding, at least be able to act according to principles in some things. They will have some experience of life entry, and at the very least, they will show some changes in behavior. Those who pursue the truth have a constantly improving spiritual state. Their faith in God gradually increases. They have some understanding of what they expose and their corrupt dispositions. And they have personal experience of and genuine insight into how God works to save people. These things all become gradually elevated in them. If you see these manifestations in a person, you can know with certainty that this is someone who pursues the truth. Amen. From God's Word I learned that to evaluate whether a person truly pursues the truth, we can't simply look at what words they speak to us. What really matters is whether they can accept and practice the truth, and whether they can repent and change after a period of time. When people who pursue the truth experience failures and setbacks, they can accept the judgment of God's Word, reflect on themselves through it, analyze and expose their motives for doing things, develop genuine hatred for their own corrupt dispositions in their hearts, and feel remorse for their transgressions, so that when it happens again, they can forsake themselves and practice the truth. Right. As time passes, they grow in life and see some change in their corrupt dispositions. Mm. If I compared this to Sister Lee's behavior, she outwardly appeared to be honest. When she was dealt with, reminded, and replaced, she nodded her head and admitted it. Saying she didn't protect the work of God's house, she pursued status and lacked humanity, and hoped to gain entry. But later, as long as her reputation and status were involved, she didn't forsake herself and practice the truth, and even scolded her brothers and sisters, which seriously harmed the work of God's house. She never reflected on herself and remained passive. I could see that she had no concept of her own corrupt nature or the source of her failure and had no genuine repentance. The understanding she talked about were words she copied. It was an illusion to confuse. If someone genuinely pursues the truth and has humanity, when they see that they have brought about great harm to church work, they will feel guilty and remorseful, hate themselves, and no longer consider their personal interests, they will think about how to make up for their transgressions and do practical work and prevent more harm to the work of God's house. However, I didn't see any of this behavior in Sister Lee. 
This fact showed everyone that she wasn't someone who accepts and pursues the truth at all. In choosing her as the leader, I hadn't evaluated her according to the truth. I had used my own ideas and notions. I merely looked at her outward good deeds and her doctrinal understanding and assumed she had achieved some change, and I chose and used the wrong person. As a result, it harmed the work of the church and the lives of my brothers and sisters, all because I failed to seek the principles of truth. Yeah. After your fellowship, I understand. To see whether someone pursues the truth, we can't just look at how well they speak. We have to see if they practice the truth and show real repentance and change. That's how we should evaluate people. Mm, yes. Yeah. Later, I reflected on myself. I was able to discern that she was a false leader, and I realized I had chosen the wrong person. So why did I still want to cover things up and give her a chance? Later, I read a passage of God's words and gained some understanding of this. Mm -hmm. No matter how many an antichrist's wrongs or what wrongs they do commit, be it embezzling, squandering, or misusing God's offerings, disrupting and disturbing the work of God's house, or making a complete mess of the work of the church and provoking God's wrath, they always remain calm, collected, and unconcerned, no matter what evil an Antichrist does or what consequences result. They never confess to God and repent to God as soon as possible. And they never come before the brothers and sisters to open up and bear themselves, nor do they admit their wrongdoings, or come to know their transgressions or recognize their own corruption, much less regret the many evil deeds they've done. Instead, they rack their brains for excuses to shirk responsibility and shift the blame to restore their own face and to not lose status. What they really care about isn't the work of the church. They care about whether their reputation and status are damaged and whether these things are impacted. They don't consider or find ways to make up for the losses of God's house due to their transgressions, nor do they ever try to make up for their debt to God. That is to say, they never admit that they're capable of doing any wrong or that they've ever made a mistake. In the hearts of antichrists, proactively admitting mistakes and faults and providing an honest account is not only an incompetent act, but it's also foolish. If their evil doings are discovered and exposed by someone, antichrists will only acknowledge that they are simply momentary, careless mistakes, never admit their own dereliction and irresponsibility. And they'll try to pin responsibility on somebody else so they can clear their own record. At times like these, antichrists aren't concerned with how to repair the damage they caused to God's house, how to open up to God's chosen people to admit their mistakes, or how to give an account of what happened. They want to trivialize major issues and make minor ones disappear. They garner understanding and sympathy with objective reasons. They try their utmost to restore their reputations, minimize the negative influence of their transgressions on themselves, and ensure that the above never has a bad impression of them, so that they are never held accountable, dismissed, or charged by the above. To restore their reputation and status, so that their own interests are not harmed, antichrists are willing to endure any amount of suffering. They will try their best to solve any difficulty they encounter, from the very start of their transgression or mistake, antichrists never intend to bear responsibility for their many wrongdoings, never intend to recognize fellowship on, expose, nor try to analyze the motives, the intents, and corruption behind those wrongs. And they certainly never have any intention to make up for the damage they've caused to the work of the church and the harm they have caused to the life entry of God's chosen people. Therefore, no matter how you view this matter, antichrists are those who never admit to their wrongdoings or repent. They are shameless and thick-skinned, beyond hope of redemption, and they are no less than living Satans. Amen. 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 God's word revealed that antichrists never admit the many mistakes they make, nor do they confess to God and repent. 
Instead, they think of how to maintain and restore their image in others' hearts to solidify their position. I saw that my own behavior was the same as an antichrist. In a task as important as selecting people, I didn't seek the truth, and I chose a false leader, thereby harming the work of God's house and the life entry of my brothers and sisters. I had transgressed, and I should have repented to God and dismissed Sister Lee and quickly chosen the right person to make up for my mistakes and shortcomings. Right. Right. But I worried that if I told my co-workers about Sister Lee's problems, they would see clearly that I had no truth, low caliber, and couldn't do practical work, and then I would be dismissed. To maintain my image and status, I concealed myself, didn't dare admit my failures and shortcomings, and covered my mistakes with more mistakes in the hope that my partner could help Sister Lee change her state. That way she wouldn't be dismissed, and my status and image would be preserved. To satisfy my personal interests, I had no regard for the interests of God's house, and I covered up for a false leader. In essence, I acted as Satan's accomplice to disrupt and ruin the work of God's house. This seriously offended God's disposition. Right. As I thought of this, I couldn't help but feel guilt and regret. It was God's exceptional exaltation that I had such an important duty in God's house. But I didn't repay God's grace. I considered my own interests at a crucial moment and ignored those of God's house. Wasn't I acting like a false leader and an antichrist? I thought of how antichrists only do things for their personal interests and status, with no regard for God's house. I was walking the path of the antichrist. If I didn't repent, I would definitely be revealed and eliminated, just like the antichrists. Yes, yes. Later, I reflected. I gave this false leader opportunity after opportunity because of my mistake in view, which was that if I fellowshiped with her enough, eventually she would change. Later, I read a passage of God's words and gained some discernment of this misconception. Let's watch a video reading of God's word. Yeah. Okay. All right. Almighty God says, To a false leader, when there is misconduct, no matter who does it, once the false leader perfunctorily deals with the perpetrator and offers some reminders and exhortation, they believe their work is done and that they have solved the problem. But this is purely Satan's logic. False leaders obviously fail to promptly clear out non-believers, evildoers, and antichrists. But they protest. I fellowshiped on God's word with them. They all recognized what they did and felt remorse. And they all cried and said they would definitely repent and no longer attempt to establish their own kingdom. Isn't this like a child playing house? Aren't they just deceiving themselves? These non-believers, evildoers, and antichrists are all people who are sick of the truth. None of them accept the truth at all, and they are not the targets of God's salvation. But false leaders treat these non-believers evildoers and antichrists that God hates and despises as God's chosen people and try to lovingly help them. What is the essence of the problem here? Is it foolishness and ignorance that stops them from seeing these people clearly? Or are they trying to please them out of fear of offending them? No matter what the reason, what matters most is that false leaders do not do practical work. They do not accept the truth when pruned and dealt with, and they do not admit their mistakes. This is enough to show that false leaders possess no reality of the truth at all. They do not work according to the work arrangements of God's house and especially where the work of clearing people out of the church is concerned, they attempt to muddle through. They only go through the motions of clearing out a few obvious evildoers. When exposed and dealt with, 
They even find various excuses to shirk responsibility and argue for themselves. Therefore, a false leader who does no practical work is a stumbling block that hinders God's will from being carried out. The things false leaders do are meaningless and worthless. They never solve the various problems that arise in the church. They simply avoid them, which not only delays the normal progress of the work of God's house, but also affects the life entry of God's chosen people. In no uncertain terms, false leaders disrupt and disturb the work of God's house and act as protective umbrellas for non-believers, evildoers, and antichrists. At the critical moment of spiritual warfare, they stand on Satan's side to resist and deceive God. Is this not a manifestation of betrayal of God? From the views of false leaders, it is clear that they are not people who pursue the truth. They do not understand the truth at all, and they are completely unqualified to do the work of leadership. Amen. I became ashamed as I contemplated his words. I believed that anyone could change as long as we fellowshiped on the truth, and they said they accepted it and admitted their fault. I didn't see people according to their essence. I was blind of eye and of heart. Back when I first met Sister Lee, I exposed and analyzed the nature of her pursuit of status and the path she took. When I heard her express some understanding and willingness to repent, I felt like my fellowship should have achieved results and that she would change. So I promoted her to leadership. After a while, Sister Lee again concerned herself with image and status and did no practical work. After I exposed her actions and fellowshiped with her, when I saw her sincere attitude and her desire to repent, I believed again she'd change for the better. In fact, Sister Lee always pursued fame and status and didn't do practical work, and she never repented or changed. She was shown to be a false leader long ago, but I continued to fellowship with her and give her chances. I was really too blind and ignorant. In fact, fellowship on the truth only plays a supporting role. Whether people can change depends most on whether they can pursue the truth or not. For those who genuinely pursue and accept the truth, other people's fellowship, aid, guidance, and dealing can help them reflect and know themselves according to the truth so they can repent and change. Right. Those who do not accept the truth and are sick of the truth, no matter how much you fellowship, will never accept the truth, nor will they understand and hate themselves based on the truth. So it is impossible for them to change. I didn't treat people according to God's word and the truth. I blindly and arrogantly applied rules based on my own imagination. And as a result, I shielded a false leader, which disrupted the church's work. I was purely playing the part of Satan. As I reflected, I confessed to God and repented. God, I wish to change my mistaken views, seek the truth, and act according to principles in my duty. Mm -hmm. Amen. Later, I went to a church to investigate work, and the brothers and sisters reported that Brother Zhang, the church leader, was passive and irresponsible in his duty. At meetings, he didn't fellowship on the truth to resolve others' problems. Church work was ineffective, but he did not actually oversee or supervise, and he did no practical work. When others gave him suggestions, he didn't accept them, and he gave various excuses to refute them. Sometimes he said, why don't you reflect on your own problems? All of this made the others feel constrained. He also liked to nitpick and find leverage over others. According to principles, Brother Zhang was a false leader and had to be dismissed. I asked the church deacons about their thoughts on Brother Zhang's issues. They said, Brother Zhang doesn't bear a burden in his duty. But every time after we fellowship with him, he shows understanding of himself and says he wants to repent and change. We want to help him and see what happens. When I heard this, I thought, according to Brother Xiang's behavior, he is a false leader and must be replaced. Otherwise, the work of God's house will suffer. But the deacons disagree. So maybe I'm in the wrong? 
If I insist on removing Brother Xiang, if I'm mistaken, what will they think of me? Will they say, I've had my duty for many years and still can't discern people? I knew I was thinking of my image and status again, so I prayed for help in forsaking myself. I realized the deacons were only looking at the fact that Brother Zhang had a way with words. They weren't evaluating him based on God's word. I chose the wrong person before because I didn't discern based on the truth or God's word. This time I had to learn the lesson, seek the truth with everyone, and evaluate false leaders based on God's word. This is accurate. Yes. yes. After that, I found a passage of God's word about discerning false leaders. Great. Discerning a false leader isn't done by looking at their face to see whether their facial features are good or evil, or by seeing how much they appear to have suffered or run around. You must look at whether they meet their responsibilities as a leader and if they can use the truth to resolve practical problems. This is the only accurate standard by which to evaluate the question. This is the principle of discerning and determining whether someone is a false leader. This evaluation is just and aligns with the principles and the truth and is fair to everyone. Characterizing someone as a false leader or worker must be based on sufficient facts. It must not be based on one or two incidents or several transgressions much less contemporary corruption be used as a basis for it. The only accurate standards by which to characterize someone are whether they do practical work and resolve problems with truth, as well as whether they are a correct person, whether they are someone who loves the truth and can obey God, and whether they possess the Holy Spirit's work and enlightenment. These are the only factors to correctly define someone as a false leader or worker. These are the standards and principles for evaluating and determining if someone is a false leader or worker. Amen. Amen. We fellowshiped on this passage together, understood how to evaluate and discern false leaders. It is not to look only at how pleasing their words sound. The key is whether they can actually do practical work and resolve problems with truth, whether they can accept the truth, and also whether they can pursue the truth genuinely know themselves and genuinely repent and change. Yes. We use these principles to evaluate Brother Zhang. He consistently performed his duty without a burden and did no practical work. The brothers and sisters helped him many times, but he never accepted or reflected on himself. He made accusations against others, making everyone feel constrained. We saw that he did not do any practical work or pursue the truth, so he was a false leader and had to be dismissed. The brothers and sisters blamed themselves and said, We haven't discerned him or evaluated him using God's word. We were deceived by the false image he presented. We nearly acted as shields for a false leader who disrupted the work of God's house. Seeing that they now had discernment of false leaders, I felt very at ease. Mm. And we dismissed Brother Zhang on the spot. After these experiences, I saw that using people based on notions harms others and ourselves. Not only does it harm the work of God's family, it causes you to transgress as well. Mm. From now on in my duty, I hope to seek more truth and principles and to view things properly according to God's word. Where I don't understand, I wish to let go of my image and status and fellowship more with brothers and sisters to make up for my own deficiencies and maintain the work of God's house. Amen. Thank God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Only based on God's words can we see people accurately.